Hey y'all, with Valentine's Day coming up in a couple days, I thought I'd talk about love. Um, do you remember the first time that you fell in love or have you ever been in love? You know, that you get that them butterflies in your stomach when you see them or see her. You know, you think about them all day long. You can't wait to you know, get in their presence again, you know, like if you both work and, you know, you're in your place of work all day long and you're just thinking about that special person and you might text each other back and forth all day or leave small little notes in the beginning of your relationship and um, it's just like that girlfriend and boyfriend just kind of love, you know. And then after a while of that, things tend to fade away, you know, and you get in dry spots here and there. And that's when you got to learn how to revive that love. You got to find ways to um, manifest into your relationship, you know, to revive it. And Paul and I used to always find. Uh, we run across a rough spot or dry spot about every five years. You know, things are going good, you know. If I would have stopped nagging uh, 20 years ago and griping and stuff, it could have avoided a lot of um, fussing and fighting in our relationship. But I didn't realize, I just thought that's what um, a housewife was supposed to do, you know, because that's what... I was taught, or that's what I was growing up around, you know, and um, that's what I've seen a lot of housewives do, and so I just thought, you know, it, I could nag him to death, you know, and he would do what I wanted, but apparently that's not the way that you're supposed to do it, <laughs> so, um, but I have, I have quit nagging in the last 10 years, I would think, you know, so things have gotten better, you know, but, um, I wish that we would have learned our love language, you know, um, I don't know if you know this, but there is five love languages out there. There's a book by Gary Chapman called Five Love Languages, and, um, they are like physical touch, quality time, Words of affirmation, um, gifts, receiving gifts, and, uh, let me see, acts of service, I'm sorry. But, um, everybody has one of them gifts inside them. And the way that a lot of couples tend to do is your mate or your partner or your husband, your wife, will tend to give you the love language that they desire to receive. And actually what we're supposed to do, is we're supposed to give our love language to our partner and they are supposed to give us back the one that we desire. You know, um, my love language is... Um, words of affirmation. I mean, you should know that about me by now, but that's what I love to receive uh, words of affirmation. I love to receive uh, compliments. Um, you know, things, those kind of things keep me going. I love to receive uh, things from Paul, you know, nice things. He'll sit in his recliner and he'll look over at me and and I'll catch him looking at me and he'll say, you are so beautiful. Even if I look like, ew, you know, but he, he'll always let me know, you know, that I'm pretty or something. He's, he's so kind in that way, you know, and um, I try not to sit around with a raggedy old bathrobe or anything, you know. Um, I think that's why he bought me a new one for my birthday, you know, because they do get sick of us women wearing our, 
raggedy old nightgowns and stuff or bathrobes that was passed down by our grandma or something. You know, they want us to look nice. You know, I mean, men are not attracted to you if, uh, I don't think they are, if you sit around and don't comb your hair all day or, you, you know, I try to, there's days that I go without makeup, but I try to fix up for my husband, you know, every day, you know, I just, that's just me, you know, but, you know, you do your marriage the way you want to, and I'll do mine the way I want to, but, um, Paul's love language is physical touch, you know, and we know now, you know, he gives me words of affirmation and he gets physical touch back, you know, and, um, so now we know our love language, you know, when things are better in our relationship. So if you're hitting a dry spot in your relationship and you need an extra boost, find your love language, find her love language, find his love language. You know, if you lo love to receive gifts, you find out what he loves and give it to him or give it to her, whatever, you know, and um, you'll receive more. You know, you make him your king and he'll make you his queen. But um, that's, you know, love to me is not um, only sex or intimacy. You know, love is everything that you do in a relationship to make it better for each other. You know, you rescue each other. You protect each other. You um, bond with each other. You, became, you become one flesh with each other. You know, you have two hearts that become one. You know, and you, you're always there for each other. You don't choose your friends over your husband. You don't choose your family over your husband. You know, and the hardest one for me is my kids. It's hard to tell me not to choose my kids over my husband. You know, and thank God I don't have the type of children that make me do that. You know, my kids respect our relationship. They, you know, uh, they're just so grateful that their mom and dad stuck together all these years, you know, and, and raised them together. You know, our kids has never been raised on by anybody on the outside of our home. You know, I worked third shift for... Um, 15 years just so we can raise our kids together. I sacrificed that time in the bed with my husband at night just so they would have one parent home, you know, and that's just the way that we've done it. You know, now our kids are older, I can work a few hours during the day and I only work from 8 to 1, so I'm home with Allison most of the day because she is 15 and she needs me there. You know, she needs her mom there. You know, and a lot of times I show her love by spending time with her. You know, um, I watch videos after videos with Allison during the day. You know, um, last night I went in there and got in her bed and she had some episodes of Honey Boo Boo. You know, and Honey Boo Boo's not my favorite show, but it makes Allison laugh, you know. And they are a funny redneck family, you know, and... If it can bring laughter out of us, we did laugh. They were funny last night. That's what I'll do. You know, I'll sacrifice that time. Josh is more serious, you know. Um, when he, he wants to talk, he wants the TV off, and he wants our undivided attention. He wants us out of our laptops and off our phones. I already know that. And that's a hard one to do because... I don't like getting really deep into this discussions because I feel like I'm getting pulled into a debate and I don't like arguing, you know, and I don't want to ruin my relationship or with my family. So, um, but Josh is really a deep thinker and I'm not on that level. So, you know, um, he knows he has to have surface talks with me. You know, he has to have talks that that I'm interested in. So he does compromise with us in that area too, you know. But we have to respect and, and be so appreciative that he is a smart person. You know, that he, he studies all the time. And we have to really be um, aware that, you know, we have to compromise with 
our conversations with him too, you know, and, but love to me is, um, uh, doing things for each other, you know, and, um, Paul, he'll wash dishes, he'll pull the sheets off our bed, he'll wash them, he'll remake our bed, you know, he'll do laundry, he'll vacuum, um, I don't think I've ever seen him dust, you know, I'll dust, uh, every couple weeks or every, Allison will dust one week and I'll dust the next or whatever, you know, if we have to. But he's really good about detailing our vehicles, you know, keeping them clean, uh, cleaning, keeping the yard up, you know. And um, I've never been out in the yard and have to do the yard work because he's always taking care of it, you know. And um, But um, we just show our love in all different ways, you know, and um, love to me is not getting together with somebody and and him having a warm place to put it, you know, and that's not love to me. You know, if you're letting somebody use you like that, you know, uh, check yourself, you know, make them earn that. Make them earn your goods, you know. Um, l let them prove to you that they are uh, worthy enough to earn you, you know. I suggest you wait till you get married, but, you know, I'm not your mama and I'm not your daddy. But when they put a ring on your finger and you have that intimacy and that love for the first time, you will have a beautiful union with each other. You will become one flesh. It, it will be beautiful, you know. And, um... I wish I would have waited, you know, and and everything, but everything worked out, you know, and um, I try to, you know, I try to teach others that, you know, just wait for that perfect soulmate. Just don't give yourself to anybody, you know, don't jump from one person to the next, you know. If you're in a long-term relationship and you uh, split up, and you immediately get with somebody else, that person is a rebound, that person. That person is not, you know, if you're a rebound person, you're not going to make it very far in that relationship. You know, I've already seen too many relationships fall. You know, if, if somebody's interested in you, make sure that they are split up with somebody else at least six months or a year, you know, before you get in the picture. And especially if they have kids, you know, if somebody has young kids, you know, keep in mind that that ex is always going to be in their life. You know, if, if he's not a deadbeat dad or a deadbeat mom, they're always going to be involved in that relationship. And um, become friends with them. If you're involved with their children, become friends with them, you know, because they have a right to know who's going to be around their kids all the time. You know, and those kids, you know, they need to be protected all around. They already come from a broken home. They already lost one of their parents out of their home, you know, and, and now they're being introduced to a whole new person in their life, you know, and um, step parents, you know, it's it's hard to be a step parent, you know, and it's hard to for a child to have a step parent. You know, I've always admired the step parents that I see that are incredible. You know, I have one friend of mine that she's a stepmother and she's just amazing. I have never ever seen a stepmom as a, as amazing as this lady, you know. She helped raise her husband's two boys and um they're gone to college now, but uh she, she is just incredible. You know, and I was thinking, man, you know, um, I didn't realize that, you know, a stepmother would have so much love for her kids, for her stepkids. And she doesn't even say that they're her stepkids. She calls them her sons, you know, and, and they have a mother in their life too, you know. But these kids are double and triple blessed and maybe quadruple blessed because uh, they they got a stepfather too, and I believe that he's pretty good to them. But... That's what I call, you know, love. You know, when 
the children are not affected by a divorce, you know, and, um, but I hope I explained, uh, some love to you. You know, I got kind of caught off in different things and stuff, but learn your love language. Learn what you desire. Give that love language to your partner and teach them how to give you what you need. And then you will give them what they need. You know, um, find, you know, quality time. If you love to spend quality time with your mate, give them quality time and they will give you you know what you desire you know if yours is acts of service if you need help around the house you give them quality time and they'll help you around the house you know if if you uh desire physical touch and they desire uh words of affirmation you keep on complimenting them and keep on raising them up and encouraging them and inspiring them and they will give you your physical touch they will uh help you out you know and and uh if yours is receiving gifts you find out what their love language is you give them what they desire and then they'll be wanting to bring you home flowers and bring you home jewelry and bring you home little you know gifts here and there you know and um but find out what your love language is and when you find that out your relationship will come a lot higher you know you will it will raise up this will fix a lot of stuff in your relationship because it matters, you know. And um, happy Valentine's Day in a couple days. And I hope everybody, you know, has a good day that day. I just, uh, I don't desire chocolate or flowers or anything like that, you know. But little notes or something like that, you know, that every now and then show me, you know. You love me and stuff like that really matters. But I hope y'all have a good day. And um, I love y'all. Have a good bye.